Hey everyone, I'm Krista Seiden, and I'm here today with Breen Baker, who is a product manager on Google Analytics. Breen, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thanks for having me, Krista. Of course. Today, Breen is going to tell us all about sub properties in Google Analytics 4. Sub properties are really cool because they allow you to see a subset of your data rather than the entire source property so that you can do things like look for individual data sets by geo or location or for different governance needs. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Breen and he's going to walk us through sub properties in Google Analytics 4. Thanks, Krista. So we'd like to start with why we designed sub properties to begin with, and that's to govern your data. So sub properties were designed to filter a subset of your data and to give it to a subset of users. Most commonly, we see regional subsets of brands. You're also gonna to wanna to consider very heavily if you have an app or apps or not. Uh, apps uh, have a limitation where an app can only be linked with one GA4 property. And so if you do need a subset of app data to go to any other team, you're gonna to need to use a sub property. And then lastly, one of the key points to leave you with is that sub properties are just like other properties. They have the same limits, the same quota, the same access controls. They're able to do integrations uh, and they behave like ordinary properties. And you should expect them to behave like ordinary properties. Uh, second, I wanted to go over the difference between governance and organization. Uh, it is true that sub properties were created uh, to replace some of the features from universal analytics views. However, they are not here to replace all of the features of views. You'll see some of the settings that used to reside in a universal analytics view now just reside at the property level. Uh, you're also going to find that there's a cost associated with sub properties. So you're not going to want to use them one to one in every situation. So when you are considering how do I organize and govern my data, you're going to want to look at a host of tools instead of just one. You will want to look at sub properties. Again, when a subset of people need to look at a subset of data and really only them or only they can look at that data. Um, you're also going to want to consider user management in general and most especially report collections. So groups of reports that can be created for a team can be used to organize data where one team could see the data from another team. You don't have that governance need, um, but ultimately you do want to organize so that that team can focus. Uh, we also wanted to cover that there is a cost, and I said this before with sub properties, the cost is one half of an event. Uh, uh, so if you have uh, a mutually exclusive subset of, of data broken into regions, um, it'll be one half the cost of the original ordinary property with respect to events. And it's that for that reason is one of the key reasons we're advising you not to create a sub property for every view um, from Universal Analytics. We'll finish with an example in a demo. So the example shows our most common setup. So all of the data for a given brand or business unit has been collected into a single ordinary property. And that has been broken up into that mutually, subset, mutually exclusive subset uh, of uh, geolocated data, in this case, regions. So um, every event from the main ordinary property uh, is being processed in one of these regional properties and there's no overlap. So they're mutually exclusive. And with that, uh, you'll get one half the charge for all of the events processed in the ordinary property. Uh, and with this comes the ability for only these teams, only these regions to see this data uh, and for them to have separate integrations and separate configurations. And with that, we will go to a demo. So here we find ourselves in the admin section of the Google Merch GA4 demo property. The first thing you'll probably notice is that three items down, you'll see a new-ish menu item called sub property management. I would also be able to create a sub property if I came up to the top and click the blue button for create property, where I can see that I can create all three property types. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and select sub property which brings me to the sub property creation page. I'm going to need to select an ordinary property to build from. For that, I'll select the Google Merch GA4 property I was just in. I'm going to need to test this, or sorry, name this property. I'll name it test just for now. Acknowledge that there's an additional cost and click next. Next, I'm brought to the data filters section. 
where I can create multiple different condition groups to filter out events based on browser, region, page, etc. Let's say I want to create one of those very classic uh, regional breakdowns. So I can select country. I can add a condition. I have many of my standard uh, condition options here. Let's say I wanted to match specifically the United States. Go ahead and click apply. And now if I ended my filters, I would create a property that only showed events coming from the United States. If I wanted to actually finish and create this property, I'd click next and fill out some of the business information that helps us understand who you are and why specifically you've created this property. I'm not gonna click the create button, um, but I could if I wanted to, and that would create a sub property. And from that point going forward, all events processed in the ordinary property would be processed uh, in the sub property if they came from the United States. Thanks so much, Breen, for showing us how simple and easy to use sub properties in Google Analytics 4 are. There are so many awesome use cases to use for sub properties, and I hope that you can get started with these today.